Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. How are you all today? This is the Level 1 Podcast. Today is Wednesday, the 16th of August, 2023. That is right. I'm still here. I'm still streaming. This week continues on. This is one of the longest streaming weeks I've ever done. Eight straight days of streaming, and today is day seven. We still got another one after today. How is everyone? I hope that uh, you're enjoying the week. I hope that I find you well. And if not... Well, hopefully, we can cheer you up today with some Jasper Kitty action joining us here in the office for the show. Let's give him a, a shoulder massage. Here you go. A kitty massage. Here you go. <laughs> Jasper Kitty, what are you up to today, buddy? Do you want to talk to the audience? Would you like to say something for once? What is on your mind? We want to know what are the hot topics of cats. What is the feline persuasion today? Let's hear it. Ready? Tell us. Jasper, stop kneading my leg and tell us what you're on your, what's on your mind besides making biscuits. He laid on my lap. <sighs> no, Jasper, you can't lay on my lap when I'm doing the podcast. You're a nut. All right, come on. Let's get down. <laughs> I know. I love the collar, too. It's cute, right? Uh, Swaggle Needle says, I love his collar. It's a nice collar. All right. So, everyone, welcome to the show. Um, so, with an eight-day streaming week, it was bound to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, today, I barely have anything to talk about on the show, really. Like, we've exhausted most topics. We have a few things we'll retread. For example, let's talk about the MK1 beta again this weekend. We've got a very minor update when it comes to Starfield. Um, with now, people know when you can preload the game. Outside of that, there's just not a heck of a lot going on. Did you really think for eight straight days we were going to have stuff to talk about on a gaming podcast? No. So, what we'll do is we'll cover the basics. And we're going to have a lot of just chill today. We're just going to lean back. Look, nice blue, nice blue theme as we lean back and chill. Chill in the blue with a nice Zelda Chrono Trigger theme. Just going to relax. We're not going to stress out. We're not going to be, oh, no. We're going to have a good time. We'll probably do a lot of Q&A. And, you know, if the podcast ends up running quick, like like ending early, that's fine. We'll get some extra gameplay of GTA Five in today. I'm totally okay with that. I'm sure you guys would be, too. <clears throat> So we'll see what happens today, all right? But anyway, uh, welcome to the show. And it is the middle of a crazy heat wave here in Washington State. We are 90 plus degrees outside for four days straight. We already had an unprecedented number of days this warm this summer. So on record, this is the hottest summer long term that we've ever had. We have had a summer where it was 111 degrees one day. But that was the record highest, but we didn't have as many hot days. This summer has been the overall hottest we've ever had. Like right now, my air conditioner is on high max blast. My fan is on max blast. The air conditioner across the hallway is on max blast. The air conditioner in the bedroom is on max blast. In all of our bathrooms, we have all, you know, we have the, the fans that are supposed to like vent the bathroom. I have all of those on max, you know, suck. So basically what I'm trying to do is create a wind tunnel through the house to push cold air through the house to keep the house cool. It's tough keeping the downstairs cool during days like today because we don't have an air conditioner downstairs. We can't. 
We have nowhere we can install one. We have no openable windows on the first floor. We have what are called bay windows, which are there to always bring in light, but you can't open them. So we have no actual way to install an air conditioning unit downstairs. And because of that, we rely on air conditioning upstairs only and having to try to push that cold air downstairs. Um, so that's, you know, that's the deal. It's like, whew. now it's today and tomorrow, supposedly Friday on my day off, it's supposed to cool down. It's supposed to go down to the 70. So a 20 degree differential uh, by Friday, which will be amazing. I mean, yes, we'll love that. That'll be like a reprieve for us. So that's why today you might hear a lot of loud ass, uh, you know, blasting noises here, wind, and, you know, that's the atmospheric sound of everything being on, and there's nothing I can do about that. We got to do that to try to stay cool. That's why I colored it so nice blue today. I was like, gee, maybe mental thoughts of blue cool, right, will keep us cool today on the show. Anyway, um, so I hope you're all having a good week. Yesterday was a great streaming day, to recap a little bit. Uh, yesterday, I played Street Fighter VI ranked, and we played with Honda, and great strides, great progress. To give you some perspective here, when I played with Honda on the Xbox last time, which is the last time I played with him in ranked, um, he had been ranked at one star diamond, and it took us both the daytime stream and the night stream, and we got him to three star diamond. Yesterday, we only played three hours, so probably, arguably, one to two hours less than we did on Xbox, and he's like four wins away from three star diamond. So we did really, really well yesterday with Honda. It was good ass kickings, all right? In fact, let me check. I'm pretty sure that I have my stats updated here. Jasper, would you stop rubbing my foot with your face? <laughs> he's rubbing He's rubbing my foot against his face. He's being ridiculous. Um, Let's see here. Yes. So yesterday, with E. Honda in ranked Street Fighter VI, I had 56 wins... And 29 losses for a 67% win-loss ratio. That is obviously really, really good, right? Um, yeah, in fact, that's the second best. The, the best I had was when I went from diamond two-star to three-star. This is confusing. At one point, I had an 87% win-loss ratio, which was ridiculous. But that was just like a fluke, I think. But yeah, 67%. Win-loss ratio with Honda. We're continuing with this great win-loss ratio, essentially. Um, so after yesterday, 2,224 wins, 1,466 losses for a 60% win-loss rate in Street Fighter VI, which is great. I'm very, you know, happy about this, and uh, I want to keep this going. I feel like the more we play, again, with both Honda and the Blanca, they're definitely the characters I'm the best with, and I think that if we just stick with it, with those characters in ranked, we're going to get them to master within the next couple of weeks. And then once they're master level, then I promise you we're switching to other characters. Like, I just don't want to play just Honda and Blanca exclusively. I want to go back to characters like Lily and Luke and others for variety, but I want to get these characters kind of back to where I feel like they belong before we do that, all right? So, um, yeah, good stuff, and that was a great stream. Thanks to anyone who attended or supported. And then last night, it was Chrono Trigger. And in Chrono Trigger, again, now we're eight hours in. More great positive progress in the story. Um, basically, uh, we are... You know, I forget the length of the story and exactly what the main plot lines are. But definitely, we had a, gra a great run uh, repairing the Masamune sword, which entailed us going back in time into the ancient prehistoric past, getting some crafting items, and then going back to the present, and then getting Frog as part of our party, which is awesome, and then storming the Fiend Lord's Castle, which is where we are in the game right now. Went really well, and then overall, yesterday, great support on both streams, zero complaints, everything was very nice, although, I will say this in regards to this, as you can see, yet again, you might be like, what is going on here? Every day on the podcast, we take a look at the number of members that I have, right? And we're like, oh, we're just a below 500. And this has happened like three, four times in the last week. We're looking at, oh man, we're just below 500 members. Can we hit it today? I'm going to tell you guys something. <clears throat> we have hit it every day. Every single freaking day we hit it. All right? And it's ridiculous that we, we oh man, people rally because they want to help. And I hear you. I, I, I appreciate it. And then what happens is we lose some more during the day because I think what, what's going on is 
you know, we don't have any big member bombs anymore. You know, those member bombs usually come around when there's a big marathon or an event or if there's a giant new game release. You know what I'm saying? So what's happening is these smaller amount of gifted memberships are expiring. A little bit a day, a little bit a day. So we grow, and then we lose the ones from last month, and then we grow again, and then we lose the ones from last month, and it's like, oh, man. You know, it's kind of, we got to find that happy balance, right? So yesterday, between the Street Fighter Six stream and the Chrono Trigger stream, I think this channel got like 20, 25 memberships, something like that. But as you can see, once again, we're 10 below 500, and it's because they keep, you know, expiring overnight or whatever. It's stupid, right? But it is what it is. All right, that's the nature of the beast. That's how YouTube works. So, if you could today, if you're looking to support the streams and the content, please consider becoming a member, all right? Becoming a member today, you get so many benefits, access to all my emotes. You don't have to abide by the slow mode chat if you're here live on stream. You get a cool chat crown badge. You get priority for special events right now. We've got the special event coming up in just under, a, or a little over a week, I should say. It's the 15th anniversary marathon where you're going to be able to nominate your favorite moments from my 15-year history on YouTube, and we're going to watch them back and react to them together in a cool retrospective event, and me members get priority for that event, all right? So, so many benefits to being a member, okay? So, please consider becoming a member today, or if you're someone watching my content today, and you're like, man, I want to help out, I want to help the community at large, this is how you can help, give some memberships, all right? Thank you so much. I think eventually we're going to hit this and settle in at the 500. We're going to hit the 500 and stick stick at the 500 memberships. I promise you. But, you know, it is a lot of people every day like, oh, my God, what's going on? Well, that's what's going on. It's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. You know, you get some today, you lose some today. That's, that's cause how, it, how it works. All right. So thank you in advance to anyone who supports in that method. Okay. So, last week I went grocery shopping with my wife. And she says, oh, they have all these other flavors of seltzer that we didn't have or we don't buy. And I was like, well, I swear I remember we had bought these before and we didn't like them. And she's like, well, I think we should try some new flavors this week. I'm like, all right, all right, honey, whatever you say, we'll get whatever you want. <laughs> this tastes awful this it's like ultra sweet and it doesn't taste like watermelon and it doesn't taste like strawberry it is terrible and we have drank through all the other ones that we like so i'm stuck drinking these awful seltzers oh it's just it's really nasty and I'm like, well i gotta drink it. i'm not gonna waste it so bleh, it's not good <laughs> it's just not don't i don't recommend fake Strawberry watermelon seltzer. It's gross. Don't get that one. I particularly like flavors such as um, like ch wild cherry or cherry limeade. Or they have a bunch of citrus flavors. They do like five different citrus flavors. They're all pretty good. Anything citrusy. But any of the ones that are sweet, like they have orange creamsicle, strawberry creamsicle, this one, you know, kiwi strawberry. Anything that they think is sweet, it doesn't, it's just gross. It's overly fake sweet. It doesn't really have the flavor of what they claim it is. It's just like, bleh. So, today if you see me drinking, you know, to rehydrate, and you see me making a, fa a, a pained face, you'll know why I'm making the very pained face. Okay? You'll, you'll understand, I hope. Okay? So, <clears throat> all that being said, that's what happened yesterday. And uh, let's talk about the schedule for the rest of the week. Like I said, I don't have a lot to talk about today. So, let's talk about the schedule for the rest of the week. I got a very quick news segment, and uh, then we're just going to kind of relax for a bit until we decide that we want to jump into GTA, okay? So here's the schedule for the rest of the week. Today is the return of GTA 5, the anniversary run to the daytime stream. Now, great progress. I would say, if I'm remembering from when I originally played this game, I would say we're into the second half of the game. Now, I can't 100% confirm that because I've only played this game once ever, and it was 10 years ago, and I don't really remember this portion of the game that we're in, I can't really remember it at all, honestly. So, for many of you who've played this game many times over the years, you probably are like, oh yeah, he's exactly this percentile through the story. I don't remember. So, I think we're a little bit more than halfway through. Now, last time around, I had told you guys, I had done the schedule, and I had basically reserved 24 more hours of streams 
to beat GTA 5. Now we have about 21 hours more left. And where I think we're, I want to say we're around 23 hours into the playthrough. We are 23 hours into the playthrough. Now this playthrough is a little different from my original because my original playthrough was basically just kind of getting through the story and any of the main missions that were on the map that even if they were side missions if they were like the strangers and freaks missions i would still do them because they showed up on the map right um this time around we're doing some extra content for example we're doing the delivery missions with uh trevor <clears throat> we did the weed delivery with franklin um <clears throat> i'm going out of my way a little bit to do most of that other kind of content as well i don't know if that's going to add anything i also don't know if that's going to pad the length of the game a, a lot longer than the original. Also keep in mind today, I'm an interactive live streamer. We talk, we chat, we relax, as opposed to back then, it was just me playing the game, playing the game, playing the game, beat the game as fast as possible, pump out the videos for views and add revenue profit onto the next. And that's not what we do today, okay? However, we are in somewhat of a time constraint. My goal is to beat GTA 5 by the time Starfield comes out. So by the time Starfield comes out, that's our major focus, and we don't have to worry about, oh, there's another big lingering narrative playthrough that we didn't finish, okay? So, <clears throat> that being said, as, as, as I'm explaining here, that's why I'm hoping to make great progress every time that we stream the game. Today, if I remember correctly, we have, well, we're going to do delivery missions for Trevor. I think he has one of each, like one of the driving, one of the aerial. And then after that, <clears throat> I believe... I don't think we have much side content left beside the assassinations, which you guys have kind of told me to hold off on and don't do yet. So I'm not doing them yet. I'm just going to do them later in the game then, if you guys think the assassinations should wait for whatever reason. Um, so we're not doing those. But I think that's it. I don't really think there's anything else to do besides main story missions. <clears throat> so likely we'll just continue with that until we get to another point where maybe the characters split again and have their own content that they can do or whatever. So I guess we'll see. I don't know exactly, like I said, I don't remember from 10 years ago exactly how this playthrough went. I remember the earlier hours, like the first 10 hours I kind of remember, and then I don't really remember much past that. So uh, we'll see today, you know, how it goes and go from there, but it should be fun. Now, I will say this up front. This playthrough has been a little weird when it comes to support, all right? When we started it, originally it had a lot of support, and then all of a sudden when it was a late stream, it died, and it was some of my slowest streams I was doing. But people told me, hey, if you make this a daytime stream, more people will show up because people can't show up to the late streams because it's nighttime and anyone in Europe can't make your late stream. Make it a daytime stream and that will change. So I did. I shifted this from a night stream to a daytime stream and the first two sessions went outstanding. People were showing up, engaging, supporting, having a grand old time. And I was like, awesome. I'm glad. I guess it worked out. And then all of a sudden I played it the other day, two days ago, and it was an incredibly slow stream again for support. And I was like, so what happened? You know, so I'm just throwing that out there. Please support the stream today of GTA 5. I like this game a lot. I'm enjoying playing it again with you for a 10-year anniversary run. And uh, obviously, I'm dedicating a lot of time to it to finish it before Starfield. So please support it. That's simple. Okay? All right. Later tonight, we're doing something completely different. Tonight, we are going to chill and do a late-night relaxing stream of the Street Fighter VI World Tour mode. This is the story-based campaign mode of the game that has nothing to do with the competitive play. And this mode, all right, is interesting because I have a build that's very similar to Blanca. So I'm doing all these crazy Blanca combos and stuff, which is nice. But at the same time, um, it's getting harder. Like, I remember I was playing some of the enemies were becoming way more challenging, some of the boss enemies and stuff. So we're going to play again tonight. We're going to see if we can unlock some more uh, characters. It would be great if maybe we can unlock Honda. Because if we unlock Honda, I've been playing with Honda, you know, in the game. And maybe if we unlock E-Honda, then I can start using that that play style and do even a little better. We're going to, you know, explore the open world. We're going to fight some enemies. We're going to have chill fun. A lot of opportunity to talk and relax and have a more interactive stream. As opposed to when I'm playing competitive Street Fighter Six, where that's impossible. It'll be a lot more interesting, okay? So, that'll be fun. I hope you'll join me tonight for that. 6.45 p.m. Pacific Time. Now, tomorrow, Thursday, yes, I'm still here, my eighth straight streaming day, and the final big day for Variety. It's going to be Street Fighter VI again on the daytime stream, and this time around, it's back to Blanca in ranked. He's only a few wins away from hitting one star diamond, and then obviously I want to take him past that and get him as high in the diamond ranks as I can tomorrow. 
uh, on his path back to master. Remember, he's a master rank on my Xbox, but now we're trying to take him back to master rank on PS5. Okay, so that should be fun, and I hope that you guys will join me for that. Tomorrow night will be more Chrono Trigger action as we continue on with this awesome playthrough. And that's my streaming week. I'll be off from streaming on Friday, which I know is rare. I've been here every Friday since the beginning of June. We Street Fighter VI, right? But now we have a Friday off. I just need to have it off because of my scheduling, all right? So that means no Street Fighter Friday, no Friday Night Fights. When I come back on Saturday, it'll be the Mortal Kombat 1 beta. Now, supposedly, the Mortal Kombat 1 beta is now downloadable on PlayStation. I don't know because I haven't turned on my PlayStation today, <clears throat> okay? I'm not going to turn on my PlayStation today. I'll turn it on tomorrow for Street Fighter VI Rain. So when I do, if the beta is available, I will download it. Supposedly, it is downloadable now, all right? So that means all day Saturday, both the daytime stream and the late stream will both be the Mortal Kombat 1 beta. So if you're curious about, you know, how this beta turns out, how does the game play, how does it look, find out. Come by on Saturday. I'll be playing it all day long, all right? Now, Sunday, I'm also going to play the MK1 beta on the daytime stream, all right? But Sunday night is currently up in the air. If you guys want even more, we'll do the MK1 beta again. But there's also potential that maybe after three straight streams, we're kind of burnt out and you want some variety, we can do Street Fighter VI Community Night on Sunday night instead, which I'm totally okay with. I like the Community Nights. It allows me to play with a variety of characters. It allows me to warm up for my more serious sessions coming up later in the week. I'd be down for that. So I guess the question is, would you like four straight streams of the MK1 beta, or would you like three and then a community night in Street Fighter 6? I need your feedback to determine what you want, all right? If we don't do community night, there's no community night next week. No matter what, we're just not going to do it because the rest of the schedule is kind of set. So what is the rest of the schedule? Well, since we're doing MK1 on the weekend, Monday will be DSP versus the Internet, my weekly Clips React show over on DSP Reacts, okay? Monday night will be Chrono Trigger. Tuesday will be ranked in Street Fighter VI. Honda, trying to get him from two-star diamond higher up. And then that evening, uh, we'll likely be doing... No, wait a minute. I screwed that up. I believe... I got confused. Hold on. I can't remember if that's Street Fighter VI or if that's GTA that day. Let's see. Uh... I think I need to sit down and hash this out. I have it hashed out. Let's see. No, I'm going to do GTA 5 that day. That's right, that's right, that's right. Here's what we're doing. I screwed up. So, Mortal Kombat 1 all weekend. Possibility of Community Night on Sunday night. Monday the 21st, DSP vs. the Internet and Chrono Trigger. I was correct. Tuesday the 22nd, Grand Theft Auto 5 paired with a late night stream of Street Fighter 6. Ranked gameplay. Then the next day, the 23rd, I'm actually going to do Street Fighter 6 ranked um, on the day stream. And the night stream will be Chrono Trigger. And then the 24th, which will be Thursday, will be GTA 5 and Street Fighter 6 ranked. And that's the week. That Friday, the 25th, is my day off. That's the week. And sorry, I got it confused. That's why I wrote it down here, okay? So I know that's weird. You're like, wow, that's really kind of weird. You're doing Street Fighter at night, but then at day. Yeah, I have to do it that way because it's a, it's a weird week. The length is weird. My day off is weird. I, that's that's the only way that I can, I can pull it off, all right? So then when I come back on Saturday, the 26th, that's my special 15th anniversary retrospective marathon. All day long, we'll be watching the clips that you guys are nominating and submitting. We're going to have some food. We're going to have some booze. It's going to be a fun, relaxed, party-like atmosphere to celebrate my anniversary as a YouTuber, okay? <clears throat> um, on the 27th, it's DSP versus the Internet, which is my, my react show, and Chrono Trigger. And then the 28th would be the premiere of Armor Core 6, all right? And uh, that's the earliest I can even play Armor Core. I have, I have to do that other stuff on the weekend, and I have to have that Friday off. So it kind of sucks, I know, because people are like, oh, Armored Core comes out that Friday. I, I can't be here that Friday. There's nothing I can do about that. It's just how, it, how, the, how the cards have been dealt, okay? And then moving forward, it'll just be GTA 5 and or Armored Core on the day streams, Street Fighter 6 ranked, and Chrono Trigger on the late streams. And that's going to take us all the way up until we get to the release of Starfield. And what's going to happen, hopefully... We're going to finish GTA 5, right? We're going to continue to get ranked wins in Street Fighter 6 and hopefully get both my Blanca and my Honda to master in Street Fighter 6. <clears throat> and 
Maybe we'll like Armored Core. I don't know. If we like Armored Core, great. It can be a, a regular playthrough in the rotation. If we end up not liking it after a couple sessions, then I don't ever have to play it again. All right? But we'll see. Like I said, someone had donated a code to me, and I'm just waiting. Supposedly, they're supposed to send me the code around that weekend. So as long as I get it then, then we'll, you know, I'll get it going. So let's see what happens. All right? Let's see what happens and go from there. But that's the rough schedule for the rest of the month. Fair enough? All right. Um, so, guys, I told you I don't have much today. I have one piece of news for the DSP news segment today. Literally one piece of news. If you're someone who has been waiting fervently and excitedly, all right, you're really excited for the upcoming Starfield release. Well, you're in luck. Are you ready? Ready for this? Hey guys, if you don't want drama, you should not talk about drama in the chat or else you're also going to find yourself going the way that the drama did. So stop derailing the chat right now. Okay. Um, continuing on. Um, yes, listen to this. Ready for this? Starfield will be preloadable on Xbox consoles tomorrow. And Starfield will supposedly be preloadable on PC on August 30th. <clears throat> I don't know the difference. I don't really see the big deal. Well, I don't know why they're waiting so long to do it on PC. I also don't know the big deal about... Like, I'm not even kidding. <clears throat> people are posting this up like it's a big news story. All over, like, social media. People are like, oh my god, Starfield is preloadable. Starfield, the biggest Xbox exclusive release since Halo 3. Starfield, the game that's going to save Bethesda. Starfield, the first new IP that Bethesda has put out in 17,000 years. It's Starfield, Starfield. Everyone is so excited. <clears throat> okay. Shug actually says he has more details. He says, so Windows Store will be tomorrow, but most people bought it through Steam, and Steam is preloading it on the 30th. So basically, if you got it... On Xbox, you can preload it tomorrow. If you actually bought it through the Windows Store on PC, you can preload it tomorrow. But Steam will be the 30th. Okay. All right? So everyone's freaking the hell out about this. All right? It's a preload. It's not a big deal. It's really not. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I don't know why anyone thinks this is giant news or some freaking thing to go crazy over. You're just preloading the game on your platform of choice. Really, it's, it's not that exciting. I don't know. I guess it must have been a really slow day today and no one had anything to talk about because everyone covered it like it's news. It's not news at all. It's really stupid, arbitrary, nonsense information. Um, however, supposedly, <clears throat> the review copies of this game are going out by the end of the week, meaning we might actually see our first early reviews of the game soon. I believe they're saying the review embargo is, it, is not yet. It's like another week or something like that. So essentially what's going to happen is, all right, they're going to really rush to finish this game. Anyone who got these early review copies, they're going to be turboing through this game as fast as they humanly can get through it to try to do a review of the game. As you guys know, I don't agree with this practice whatsoever. I, I say we Early review copies no longer need to go out. They serve absolutely no purpose. All they do is they promote bad behavior from these gaming media who don't do a professional job of reviewing these games early at all anymore. They really don't. They rush through to get that first that first story out there. That, oh, look, we played it. And here's, what, here's what we think, right? I absolutely hate this practice. I feel like it lends itself to either people being overly positive or overly negative about a game for various reasons to, to benefit. And I think, sadly, it skews a lot of public opinion in a way that it should not. It is 2023, all right? I trust the opinion of a content creator and gamer more than I trust the opinion of a journalist, okay? These journalists, a lot of ways, don't even agree with most of our opinions on games regardless. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about 90% of the time because they don't even know games, okay? So why would I trust their early opinion on Starfield? I don't, but yet people will. People will see these early reviews coming out and be like, oh, well, see, Starfield's awful or Starfield's the best game ever. What are you talking about? Have you not noticed 
how a lot of these weird journalistic opinions that are majority opinions are, are very wrong when it comes to game. What about Deathloop? Remember when they re reviewed Deathloop 9 and 10 out of 10 and said it was a game of the year contender? Deathloop wasn't even average. And most gamers agree on that. It wasn't a very good game. But all the journalists said it was absolutely overwhelmingly great. Why? You see what I mean? And this is not just one time. This has been happening again and again and again. These journalists saying these games are so good. And then the games come out and actual gamers get their hands on them. Like, what are you talking about? Okay? So, I don't think this ever needs to happen. Listen, if you are skeptical about Starfield, and you know what? You should be. Why should you be skeptical about Starfield? Well, there's two major reasons. Reason number one is because Bethesda has not really put out a great game in a long time, right? Their last major outing, admittedly, of a single-player experience was Fallout 4, which was sitting on the fence of whether it was good or not. Their last other outing was Fallout, uh, what was it, online or whatever the fuck it's called, Fallout 76, and that was dog shit, right? So there you go. Now, the other thing is, you have to understand that a lot is hinging on the release of Starfield. So, what you're going to know is that, basically, a lot of journalists may be looking to skew this story one way or the other. Either, oh my god, it's the beautiful redemption story, or, oh my god, the entire building is burning. You see, they're going to try to skew it one way or another, because that's the way that they're going to get maximum attention on themselves. So, you should be skeptical about Starfield. This company hasn't put out good games recently, and you can't really trust gaming journalists to do, give an honest story here. Do you see? So, for me, I don't trust a damn word about any of these reviews. I would much rather have real gamers get their hands on this game, play them for a few days, stream them live, and then tell you their opinion. Right? If you're on the fence about Starfield, do not, and I repeat myself, do not judge your purchasing you know, decision on these pre- release reviews do not do it all right wait wait for others to buy the game and play it and tell you their opinions people who you are of like mind people whose opinions you trust okay don't believe the bullshit from these fucking media companies they're completely outdated and the only reason they still exist is this the money and the advertisement revenue they bring in if that didn't exist they'd be defunct they're dinosaurs they're completely outdated and not needed in the modern gaming landscape we need to stop putting faith in their bullshit and wait for real gamers to actually play this game and review it, okay? So, don't believe it. Wait for the game to come out. People who pay extra money will get it on the 1st. People who are waiting for Game Pass will play it on the 6th. Wait for those dates, get their opinions, and then make a judgment on your own merits from what other people have said and what you've seen of people actually playing the game. Don't believe the early bullshit. It's nonsense, okay? So, there you go. It's that simple. All right? That's all I got to say about that. So, ooh, you can preload it today, and the reviews are coming soon. Big deal. I think that's, like, nonsensical. That's not news to me. All right. All right, so, ladies and gents, I'm not kidding. That's what I had to talk about on today's show. There's just not a lot going on, right? I knew it with an eight-day streaming week. I was like, you know, one of these days I'm going to run out of topics, and today I feel like I've kind of run out of topics. So outside of the fact that we need to determine if we're doing community night on Sunday night in Street Fighter 6 or not, outside of that, what do you guys think? What would you guys like to talk about today? All right? Keep in mind, no bullshit, no drama. People have been trying to pull me into drama for weeks. No no drama, okay? I had enough of the drama, especially this week with a bunch of fucking idiots and everything going on. So what, what topics would you guys like to talk about? So Beast Bond says, is Microsoft and Bethesda fucked if it flops? Fucked? I don't know if they're fucked. Um, you know, Bethesda is one of those companies people tend to spend no matter what. Um, they definitely need a win. Like, really, they need a win because they have had so many lo you know losses. I mean, that Redfall earlier this year, oh my god. You know, and the way that they were promoting and touting that game like it was going to be good and it was so bad. Um, they need something. To at least say, oh, so in the last four years we bought all these game studios. Here's finally a good game from one of those studios. Because they literally haven't put out a good game from one of those studios that they bought yet. So they have nothing to show for all of that time and investment and hype that they talked about it. They have nothing yet. They need something concrete to show to the public. Say, here's a good game. 
that came out under the time that we owned this company, right? So that's what they need. They're looking for that first good one, correct? And yeah, it would be nice if this were the one, honestly. I would like Starfield to be good. I would like to have a nice, lengthy, fun, chill RPG experience with you guys. But we don't know if it's going to happen, right? We just don't know. So... Okay. Let's see. Scroll up. Some people ask other things. Let's see. Oh, really? Defiant HD says they did a new dev Q&A for Starfield, but it happened right before or during the beginning of this stream, so that's why I don't know about it. All right, well, I guess I don't know anything about it to talk about. <clears throat> Extremely real... We're currently working on getting my characters to master, and then once they're at master, yes, we'll play master matches, but I have to get them back there. So there you go. Will I ever return to GTA, uh, Liberty City Stories, or Vice City Stories? Maybe someday. It would be nice if they would remake them in a collection, because those versions that I played... Remember, originally I played the PS2 versions, and they sucked. They were laggy, and bad, and buggy. And I don't know if I ever went back and played the HD versions. I would like to maybe one day replay them, but... I mean, no desperate need to, okay? Oh, yeah? Jane says he's not watching He-Man. <laughs> now I got you watching He-Man, huh? Good Lord. Well, that's the that's the, what I used to watch, okay? That's what I used to watch when I was a kid, He-Man. And the Masters of the Universe. What's up, Juan? Good morning. How you doing? All right. So what's on everyone's mind? I have no shout-out. Literally zero shout-outs. No one has contributed yet this morning. So I have nothing to shout-out. Okay? So, with how hot it's been in the Pacific Northwest, you think about ordering in Thai food and have chicken, larb, and pasta salad with a Thai tea, says Tub Tub. Oh, uh, no. Today, you want to know what we're having? Hot dogs and beans. Why? Because we make them on the, on the stove top. We don't heat up the house. And tomorrow, we're just having leftovers. We're not cooking these hot days. We're staying away from cooking. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, JDTV, we're, uh, we're definitely not doing any nonsense. Don't worry. We're doing absolutely no nonsense and no drama. Trust me. D trust me when I say. All I will say is this, okay? It's like clockwork. It's like the most ultra-predictable nonsense, all right, of how people act on the Internet, right? It's at, like, hook, line, and fucking sinker, one million percent predictable behavior from certain people. You know how they're going to behave. You know how they're going to react. They react exactly as expected. And that's why I don't wrap myself up in their bullshit. I have absolutely no desire to be wrapped up in anyone's bullshit. All right? I've gone through a bunch of bullshit earlier this year with nonsense and drama. We're done with that. I'm not getting sucked into anyone else's vortex. And I'm absolutely not letting anyone else ride my coattails and try to make profit off of me. I'm done with that bullshit. So, absolutely not. We've got our usual schedule going and we are very happy to ride with that and have a good day today as usual. So, no worries there. We're playing GTA. Absolutely nothing changes. No waste of my time. <laughs> Okay. Who would I say was the most evil GTA antagonist? Antagonist. Uh, probably Tenpenny. Officer Tenpenny. Because he was just one million percent corrupt. Like everything he did was for personal benefit and screwing everyone else around him, and he completely abused his power. So there you go. What's my favorite thing about an RPG? Oh, man. You know, a perfect RPG to me is a combination of... First of all, it's got to have a great story. If you don't have a riveting story that hooks you in an RPG, you're not going to care to invest the amount of time investment that it needs to get through it. I mean, how many RPGs are short, right? You, typically, RPGs are some of the longer games out there. 
So if you don't have a good story to hook you and make you want to continue to see what the result, you want to see characters that are interesting that will have character development. You want to see multiple plot lines unfolding over the course of the game. You want to see how those plot lines interact and intersect and how they turn into a one large oversweeping narrative. <clears throat> You want to have resolutions to plot lines, maybe redemption stories, right? You want to see all of that in a really good RPG, basically. You want to see these cool different kinds of tones be tied together. You don't want to see everyone be a cookie-cutter protagonist who's boring, who doesn't have anything to say, a milk toast character with nothing to them, and they just go through the, the motions to save the day. That's a boring RPG. You want something different with some originality and some fun, and again, something that will hook you because you care, you're invested in that story. You're invested in what you want to see, right? That's what you want, correct? That, exactly. So, to me, that's, that's primarily the best. Even if you have a game that you don't necessarily love the gameplay, you think that the graphics are outdated and the music ain't good. If the story's good, that's the primary thing for me when it comes to an RPG. Now, obviously, the best RPG would be one that has everything good together, correct? And the thing is, with me, a lot of RPGs, people say, well, Phil, a lot of the, the RPGs that you've played over the years are kind of grindy, right? Like, those old turn-based JRPGs, how can you even stand those? Because those are just so lengthy and they're boring, right? To which I respond, to me, that's actually part of a relaxing experience with an RPG. You're not looking for super action-packed. You're essentially looking for something that you have a story that's unfolding, you have an investment of time, and that time investment pays off. I don't mind grinding in an RPG if it means that I get some kind of a good reward, like a good item at the end, or maybe leveling up and unlocking new abilities and techniques for my character that make them more fun to play moving forward in the game. I don't mind the grinding style of old-style RPG gameplay. A lot of people to this day can't stand it, and that's why you end up with shit like Final Fantasy 16. I just need action. Everything's got to be action. Yeah, I and mean, look how boring that was, right? Just literally, I didn't have to pay attention. It was just, oh yeah, action. Mash buttons. Oh, dodge. Mash buttons. Dodge. Activate ability. Dodge. Dodge. Activate ability. Dodge. I'm not paying attention, right? That's crappy, you know? So, on top of that, you know, RPGs, I'll be honest, have some of the best music of most video game franchises these days. Usually it's very cinematic or a big orchestra or whatever. It's very interesting, correct? And I absolutely would like that in a video game like that. Like, that's the one I would expect to end. The best music of any video game, quite frankly. So, when you combine all these elements, a story that's riveting, combat that's rewarding, music that's outstanding, you know what I mean? All of those things combined can definitely make an amazing RPG. For me, though, I, I'll be honest with you, it's got to be the story. I don't think I've ever played an RPG where I didn't like the story, but I toughed through it because I liked everything else. I think it's got to be the story is interesting at first and primarily, and then after that, everything else comes later. You know what I mean? Or everything else is the icing on the cake. So that, for me, that would be my honest answer, would be stories is primary. Oh, boy, look what's going on here. Oh, stories number one. And uh, everything else comes second. He's back to needing my legs. Joel Law says, would you, pre would you prefer a new Mass Effect or a new Witcher if you could choose? You, I mean, you guys know my answer. It's going to be Mass Effect. I love the Mass Effect original trilogy, even though the third one kind of sucked, let's be honest. I still think that Mass Effect was one of the best franchises of the last 20 years. Um, it sucks that Andromeda really ruined the franchise as it did, but now they're redoing it, right? But for me, it would be Mass Effect, but obviously I want Mass Effect to be good again. I want it to go back to the original feelings of, like, the original Mass Effect 1. If they Because when I played Mass Effect 1, <clears throat> I felt like I was playing Star Trek, but also, like, kind of an action-based, like, game, kind of together. It was, like, Star Trek plus, plus, plus. And I liked that. There were races of you know, aliens that were interesting and you wanted to learn about their cultures and all about their, their biology and how different they were from humans and you wanted to learn about all the political strife between all these different groups and how, how everything unfolded. And then on top of that, you had this whole, you know, kind of almost alien invasion plot line and stuff like that going on. It was great. That was like, wow, it's actually Star Trek, but it's a super good interactive game, right? And then they went from that and they kind of degraded it down to a shooter. Like, Mass Effect 3 is literally a shooter. There's no RPG elements at all. It doesn't even feel like an RPG, okay? So, I would say, to me, it's definitely Mass Effect. 
Mass Effect is the big one that I would want to come back. Witcher is great. Don't get me wrong. Witcher 3 was outstanding. Had some of the most meaningful side content you could ever see. Really. But I just have no desire, uh, you know, to go back to that franchise at this time. We haven't heard much about Witcher. I think they're making multiple new Witcher games. Are they not? They are making multiple new Witcher games. I thought they said, but we don't have any information or details on them yet. I would be way more interested in Mass Effect being good again. Okay? So there you go. <clears throat> All right. Does Jasper have a bow tie? Yes, he does. Yes, you do. <laughs> he has a cute little bow tie on his collar. Yes, he does. I agree. The Heart of Stone and the Blood and Wine DLC expansions for Witcher 3 were some of the best expansions ever for an RPG. They were like their own standalone games. They were seriously good. Seriously good. Okay. <laughs> No, Jasper doesn't dress up for Halloween. He does not like wearing outfits. We tried. He hates them. He takes them right off or just itches at them constantly and tries to destroy them with his claws. Uh, no, we can, he, we're can. we not giving him a Halloween outfit. <clears throat> Will I be reacting to the Songun D's Game Awards? Yes. We're actually, I'm canceling the entire schedule today. We're going to react to the live to those Sunganese Game Awards. I actually don't know what the hell you're talking about, but okay. What's going on, Mark? Good morning. Good morning, Willow. How are you? Welcome, everybody. Do I think the worst game of this year is Final Fantasy? No. No, 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 no. Listen. Final Fantasy 16 is a perfectly enjoyable game. It's just not Final Fantasy. Do you understand? Like, what they did is they took the name Final Fantasy and they slapped it on a game that literally plays nothing whatsoever like any other Final Fantasy game before. It abandoned every single thing that made a game Final Fantasy. I already said this. If they called it Iconic Legacy or Iconic Kingdom, right? That game would probably have been rated a 7 out of 10 and would have been perfectly passable for just another JRPG. But they called it Final Fantasy 16, so people would buy it and play it based on the name recognition, and that prompted every reviewer to give it a 9 or 10 out of 10 because they're idiots. Okay? The game is not Game of the Year contention in any way, shape, or form. It doesn't perform well on console. It's incredibly repetitive, grindy, and boring when it comes to the gameplay, which is not rewarding whatsoever. The one saving grace of the game is the plot. But it's hard to enjoy the plot when the pacing is so bad. So it's just like... It's not the worst game of the year. No, it's not a terrible game. It's a perfectly passable RPG. It's just not great. You know? Just because I don't like a game as much as others doesn't mean that I think it's the worst game of the year. That's a ridiculous thing to say. <clears throat> what's my plan for October 20th Spider-Man 2 and Super Mario Wonder Spider-Man would absolutely always be the priority like that would be the daytime stream the platformer would always be night platformers you're in no rush to get into them you can take your time with the platformer it's no big deal you always want the narrative based game would be the major always so Oh, Jade, you're watching the Netflix He-Man? I told you I didn't like that one. I, when they remade He-Man years and years ago, I actually tried watching it, and I was falling asleep. Like, I couldn't watch it. I thought it was so boring. So, I don't like that one. Felix the Maid, so I'm trying to eat Pad Thai for the last 30 minutes. It's too much for me to eat. Do you get that whenever you eat Pad Thai? Well, Pad Thai is the noodle dish that has peanuts, but it's spicy, correct? I think Pad Thai is all right. I've only had it a few times. I prefer other dishes. Like, there's this... I'm trying to remember. Last time that my wife and I ordered Thai food many months ago, I got something really good. It was sweet, but it was also spicy. But I can't remember what the hell it was. I'd have to look at my order history to figure out what the hell it was. But it was really good. But it's not... Usually, I don't get Pad Thai. I'll get something else.
Yes, Abdullah, we're aware. I talked about this a couple days ago on the new segment that Assassin's Creed Mirage will be released early. Correct. <clears throat> What's my favorite John Candy film? Your Steve from Accounting says his is The Great Outdoors. Man, John Candy. The late, great John Candy was in many good movies. Sometimes great cameos and sometimes as a, as a main attraction, right? Uncle Buck's a great one. That's a really good one. Obviously, everyone's going to say Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. With him and Steve Martin and their chemistry is amazing. Um, <clears throat> man, thinking back, I got to think back of all these, these movies. You know, okay, you know what's a weird movie that John Candy made that most people don't mention? It's one of those ones that most people didn't see or if they saw it, they didn't like it. Who's Harry Crumb? Did you ever see that one? That's a weird movie. Back then in the 80s, for some reason, every comedian had a movie where they decided that they were going to dress up in a bunch of disguises. And I don't know why. Like, all the major comedians did these movies. And this is the one where I guess he's playing like a... a, a I think he's a detective or a private eye. And he keeps dressing up in ridiculous disguises that no one's going to believe. But he's pretending like he's a good... He's a good... Like, I think at one point he's wearing, like, blackface. I'm serious. Like, he's wearing blackface in it and all this other stuff. And that's probably why no one mentions it anymore. <clears throat> but the reason I remember it is because it was on HBO a million fucking times. It was literally on HBO, like, a hundred times. They kept playing this movie over and over. So I probably saw it, like, 400 times. All right? But it's just not that good. It's all right. It's a, it's a passable John Candy comedy. But... For some reason, all comedians of the 80s had a movie where they decided they were going to dress up in a bunch of disguises. I don't know why they did it. it they're not, it's not funny. It's not believable. <laughs> I don't know. It's really weird. He, that's true. He was really good in Cool Runnings as well, but that's not really a comedy starring him. That's He's actually the more dramatic character in that one, right? <clears throat> What's the longest layover I ever had when I had to fly? Uh, if I remember correctly, the longest layover I had was around 10 hours, and that was because my flight got canceled. I remember I had been... I had a lay, I can't remember where the airport was at all, but everyone got off the first plane, and we were supposed to get on the next plane, and they canceled the flight. So the entire flight of people were just sitting there with nothing to do all day long, until another flight opened up that they could put us all on. So we all just sat there in the airport for like 10 hours doing absolutely nothing. It was so boring. You know, what do you do? You get some reading materials. Back then, you couldn't have the internet. This was like the 2000s. So there was no internet on your phone. So the only thing you could do was go buy things to read. So I probably, I think I bought a bunch of magazines and like a book. I sat around reading and drinking, you know, some, some stuff from like a snack shop or whatever. And just, just killing time. Incredibly boring. And nothing you could do about it back then. You were just stuck. Today, everyone has internet on their phone. They have shit to do all day, right? Play a fucking mobile game or whatever. Back then, it was nothing. So, it sucked. But that was unintentional. Like, I would never book a flight where I have an insane layover like that. Intentionally. That was completely unintentional. Oh, yeah? Captain says he has... Uh, hold on, it blocked. Uh, he has one hour in Atlanta, then to Knoxville. The, yeah, one hour layovers are fine. It gives you enough time to get off the plane, stretch your legs, use the bathroom, maybe grab a drink, and jump right on the next flight. Ideally, that's kind of the layover you want. You want about an hour. It gives you enough time to do everything and not feel rushed. <clears throat> When's the last time I played a PS1 game? Oh, what, what was the last PS1 game I played, guys? You guys that remember? It had to have been for YouTube. I couldn't tell you what it was. <sighs> oh my goodness. Hooey. Jasper's tickling my hand with his nose. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to read the chat. Like, ah, it's tickling. Uh, you're welcome, Steve. He says, thanks for answering my questions. Yes, I do this every day pretty much. As long as we have time for it. Some podcasts, I have a ton of things to talk about. We don't have this big segment. Today, particularly, we don't have much to talk about. 
Mr. Game Master said, did you talk about the new South Park game? No, I don't know anything about a new South Park game. I saw nothing about it today in the news. Was there a new South Park game coming out? I'm not aware of this. I got my hair. He licked my hair. <laughs> okay, Abdullah says, Tekken 2 and Resident Evil Director's Cut were the last PS1 games I played. There you go. And that would have been last summer when PS Plus Premium launched. And I tried those games off digitally on the PS5. There you go. There's your answer. Thank you, Abdullah. I've never been to a Paramount theme park. I don't know what that is. What? There's a Paramount theme parks? I didn't even know that. The only movie themed theme park I'm aware of is Universal Studios. Hehehe. <laughs> Where do I get all my news? The X app. I love it. People post up. They go, did you know that Starfield is preloadable starting on August 17th? X gonna give it to you. Just like that. That's what everyone does. X gonna give it to you. Gonna give you news. <laughs> yes. The fucking X app. It's so stupid. Jeff Soroy or Soros. Sero I don't know how to say your name. So it's going to be called South Park Snow Day. Due out sometime 2024. There's a minute teaser out for it. Oh, I did not see that. That's right. Rest in peace, DMX. Rest in peace to DMX. <clears throat> Would you? You're kneading my leg again. Don't you dare lay down on my lap. You're not allowed. Not today. Okay? Captain says, I could only stop by for a bit. Out with my mom for lunch. See you when I get home. Sounds good. Enjoy your lunch, DCW. Have a good, uh, have a good one. Get something yummy. Jasper, you're really inspecting my desk today. What is so interesting? There's nothing too interesting. No, that's the bottle cap. Don't you dare try to steal my bottle cap. Then I can't reseal my seltzer. Ah, the new South Park game will be full 3D, no longer 2D. Oh, God, what's it going to be? The only 3D South Park game I remember is when they tried to make one that was a first-person shooter on the Nintendo 64. And it was not very good. Jasper going to give it to you. He going to give it to you. Jasper, say something. He says nothing. He never speaks. On camera, that is. He is a very talkative kitty off camera. On camera, clams right up. <clears throat> JDTV says, Crew Motorfest went gold, and I know that I'm not too interested in it, but the beta was amazing. Oh, yeah. Is it going to be... Is the Crew Motorfest going to be either on Game Pass or on, like, PS Plus or something? I'm not buying it. Other than that, though, I'm not going to spend any money on it. What's an underrated Chinese food dish? I don't know. I'm not a connoisseur of Chinese cuisine. I, I like all kinds of like Chinese food. Let's see. I like lo mein. I like chow mein. I like fried rice. You know, I like, um, you know, Chinese cuisine is very different. There's many different things you can get. Dim sum, right? Dim sum is Chinese. And dim sum is absolutely amazing, right? Um... Yeah, I'm not, but again, I'm not like a, I'm not a connoisseur. I wouldn't know a million different Chinese food dishes or anything. Can I get Paramount Plus and review the new Star Trek show, Strange New Worlds? You're the first person, Stealthy Kupo, to ask me to do so. Considering that that's one person in my viewer base, for now I'll say no. But if there is a desire to see that in the long term, if you guys ask me, uh, then I would say I would check it out. But right now, I don't think I want to get a whole new streaming service just to watch one show. Is it any good? What do people think about that show? I've seen advertisements for it, but I don't know exactly if it's any good or not. Long says, Strange New Worlds is great. I will second the ask. That's two people who have asked me so far to see Strange New Worlds. When is Strange New Worlds set? What is the time frame? Like, What is the lore? What is the show? I don't know anything about it. It feels more like 90s Star Trek shows. <clears throat> it's Captain P Commander Pike who was Commander Pike the name sounds very familiar who was that no the Crew Motor Fest is not on Game Pass okay thank you JDTV Commander Pike sounds incredibly familiar but I can't remember oh it was Captain Kirk's captain so it's before Captain Kirk oh It's a prequel. Oh, no. It's a prequel. 
Oh no, why did they make a prequel? You guys know how I feel about prequels. I hate them. <laughs> I hate prequels. I hate prequels. Why do I hate prequels? Because if it's a prequel that's canon, then that means that it has to adhere to everything you already know about what happened after. Therefore, you can't have anything crazy happen, right? You will never on Strange New Worlds find out about a new alien race that could threaten the entire galaxy. Why? Because then you would already know about them because of all the shows that came after. You understand? All you can maybe know is, oh, the first time we encountered them ever. But who cares because you already know what happens in the future. I hate prequels. They're a waste of time, man. I really, I, you know, I just don't enjoy them. I think that they're annoying. Long says, I hate them normally too. Stranger Worlds is great. Star Trek doesn't have to stick to canon. They can play with time. What? Oh, no. Dabhan says, Stranger Worlds is arguably one of the best Star Trek series we have had since the original series. What was the one that everyone hated? Enterprise? Star Trek Enterprise? Is that the one everyone hates? Right? Wasn't that the one that had the Klingons that didn't have the Klingon forehead and everyone was confused? Or something like that? Oh, Discovery. Star Trek Discovery. <clears throat> That's the one. Everyone hates it. Oh, really? Enterprise was the ultimate prequel. Oh, never mind. Enterprise was a different one. I'm, I got all my Star Treks confused. After after Voyager, I've never seen any Star Treks, so I don't know any others. Yeah. Everyone loved Picard Season 3. Well, then people say that Star Trek Picard Season 3 is essentially the final season of The Next Generation, right? <laughs> uh, I don't have many thoughts on Exo Primal when it came out, like I told you guys. It looks like Exo Primal is a, a perfectly fine summertime action co-op game. A game that it's out in the summer, you play it for a month or two with your friends, you grind, you have some good times, and then you move on. Right? It's not a game that's like a hyper focus. It's not something that a lot of people are going to end up loving long term, but it's something that was perfectly acceptable for a summertime romp. And then you just move on and you forget about it. Right? So that's really my take on it. That's why I didn't play it. I don't really care about games like that. Demance is another obscure movie like Who's Harry Clum? My Blue Heaven. My Blue Heaven, starring Steve Martin, where he, he played a uh, reformed mobster, which is hilarious. There's no way that he's a mobster. Right? But he plays a reformed mobster. And I remember the entire movie. Well, I remember parts of the movie. Because, again, it was one that was played on HBO constantly. I remember he's in the supermarket. And there's a woman that he thinks is hot. And his, his line to her is, You can't be in the frozen aisle. And she goes, Why? And he goes, Because you'll melt all the stuff. And she turns to him and goes, Oh! <laughs> Yes, I remember those movies. Those terrible movies. They used to be on HBO constantly. I remember them. <laughs> anyway. Good afternoon, Cracker Jacks. How are you? Good to see you. Did I watch My Little Pony? Admittedly, I've never watched My Little Pony. Yes, 1980s Little Shop of Horrors is great. That is a, a great movie. Even as cheesy as it is, it is a great watch. It's funny. It's scary. It's got hilariously silly music. It's great, man. I love that movie. Are spring rolls underrated, overrated, or perfectly rated? I don't know because I don't know how they're rated. I think spring rolls are all right. For me, if I'm going to have an egg roll, I prefer to have something with meat in it, like, a, like shrimp or pork or something in it. But a spring roll is just veggies, and that's fine. If you have like a good dipping sauce and a crispy on the outside, it's pretty good. But I would prefer like an egg roll with, with some meat in it. Oh, excuse me. Olympian says, we need a Final Fantasy VIII playthrough. Interested in seeing your reaction to the game in modern times. Top two Final Fantasies for me personally. Maybe one day we'll do it. I know that they remade it in HD a couple years ago, right? It's something to think about. It's one that I would consider for downtime at some point in the future, for sure. Shout out to TK with the first actual contribution of the day. No lie. It's a Hey You Anthropomorphic Pair Super Sticker. Thank you to TK for that. I appreciate that. Uh, 
Very good. You can have meat in a spring roll? I've never heard of meat in a spring roll before. Any spring roll I've ever seen, it's not that thicker breading that has more grease to it. It's like very thin. You can almost see through it. And it's always tightly wrapped and has veggies inside. Those are the spring rolls I've had. And you always have some kind of a dipping sauce. I've never seen Ed, Ed, and Eddie know. That was after my time of watching cartoons. You got to remember, I'm 41 years old. By the time that those kind of cartoons were coming out, I was already like in my early 20s. So I wasn't watching cartoons actively. Okay. Oh, I don't know what a lumpia. Tub Tub says lumpia are something they have meat in them and they are made with spring roll dough. Never heard of it. A lumpia. Hmm. It came out in 1998. Yeah, again, in 1998, I was what? 16, 17? You know? Do you think I was actively watching children's cartoons? <laughs> I was playing competitive Street Fighter and traveling to play it all around the country. Uh, I was working uh, pretty a, a lot during those days to make money. Um, and I was in high school, you know, you know, junior year, senior year, whatever, junior year. So, no, I wasn't watching Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I had other things to do. Other things were on my mind than Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Do I remember Captain Planet? Well, I remember that he's a hero and he's going to take pollution down to zero. I'm trying to remember all the lyrics. I can't remember. Something, 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 but he's fighting on the planet's side. Captain Planet. Going to help him burn asunder bad guys who like to loot and plunder. We're the planeteers. You can be one too. And saving our planet is the thing to do. Looting and polluting are not the way. Here's what Captain Planet has to say. The power is yours. I almost remember all the lyrics. I, there's like one part that I forgot. So there you go. Did I enjoy handheld gaming? Uh, I don't really do handheld gaming anymore. I do grind a little bit in, in various uh, mobile games. Uh, you know, off camera, not a lot of time invested in them these days. Um, I was at one point invested a lot, but that was like five to six, seven years ago. I'm trying to think exactly when, like 2015, 2016 was when I was playing mobile games the most, and I haven't really invested that much in it since then. All right. <laughs> so, this is, look at this. Yeah, it's fake. Look at this. A fake account. A fake account. Just did a super chat. Well, I'm just going to ban that right away. Completely fake. <laughs> what an idiot. Okay. Will I ever either gift either of my channels a member? Huh? What does that even mean? Will I either gift either of my channels a member? Huh? <laughs> eh? From all right. From what I'm to understand, I could be wrong. All right. Basically, the reason YouTube doesn't allow you to gift memberships on your own channel, just like I believe over on Twitch, it's the same thing. Like you can't gift out subs to your own channel. I guess there's something to do legally with, like, paying yourself or something like that. To my knowledge, or else they wouldn't prevent it. I mean, why would they prevent it if there was no problem, right? I guess legally there's something with, like, if I were to gift memberships to my own channel, but then I'm making money on it, like, I don't I don't know the legal ramifications or anything of that, okay? I just don't know. But for my understanding, that's the deal. Like, they, pre 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 they, they prevent it for a reason. There's a legal reason why you're not able to give things out on your own channel like that, Okay? So, I think what this person is suggesting is I have two YouTube channels. So, why don't I log into one YouTube channel to then gift memberships to the other channel, right? 
Well, probably for the same reason that you don't give to yourself because there's probably problems with that, right? Why? You know what I mean? Like, there's a reason why they're preventing it. Why open up the hornet's nest when, you you know, I don't know how that exactly would benefit anyone. I just, you know, it's just going to get me in trouble because you know the moment that I do anything like that, I'll get mass reported all over the internet. Oh, my God, did you hear that Phil? Phil is fucking laundering money from channel to channel by doing this and that and then the report and I'll get in trouble with YouTube and shit like that that's just stupid I'm not fucking around I'm just not you know I'm not fucking around with that stuff you know what do you mean just stop Just stop. Just stop. Even though it's prevented on YouTube from doing it, just stop explaining why I wouldn't want to mess with it. Okay. Well, then don't ask the dumb question. <laughs> don't ask the stupid question. <clears throat> All right. Exactly. Is it not disingenuous? Think about it this way, right? Let's be honest. Is it not a measure of success to say, oh, I have this many viewers, I have this many paid supporters, correct? Is that not like a measure of success? I think people, and by the way, I don't believe in that. I think that's stupid, but I think people do that. It's a measure of success to judge how well someone's doing by the amount of people who watch them on the internet and the amount of paid support that they receive, correct? Is it not disingenuous then to inflate that by yourself right for example youtube and twitch to my knowledge maybe i'm wrong here youtube and twitch do not allow what's called view botting which means you would buy artificial views to boost your performance to make it look like you're actually more popular than you are correct they don't allow for that right that's that's not like in terms of service no view botting allowed so isn't it the same if you were to go and purchase your own support in an effort to show that you have more support than you actually really have, right? Or, or what would be what would be the, what would be preventing someone from going ahead and buying hundreds of paid subs or memberships? Say, look, look at me! I've got a thousand paid subscribers on my channel all day, man. But in reality, like seven hundred are fake. But then you could tout that you have a thousand, and that might actually make more people think that you're more popular than you are and then become a member or a sub or whatever it would be called there, right? Am I not correct? So I don't know how that would be allowed. That doesn't seem to make sense to me, right? No, I know. We are Listen, I know you guys are trying to start drama with LTG. We already talked about that. That was one of the questions I had. Remember, when I was watching that LTG stream, right? Here I am watching it, and supposedly this guy's got over 2,000 viewers. Over 2,000 viewers on his channel. And that's regular. It's not like, oh, there was an influx of viewers who can't talk because it's sub-only mode or something like that. He had 2,000 viewers coming into his channel every day, supposedly, that he streams. Yet his chat is like 20 people. And then when he goes to play, they make fun of him. <laughs> right? And I was like, that was that was the question I had for you guys. I was like, how exactly does this work? Because I, I was fascinated after watching him play. I was like, I don't get this. Does he really regularly get 2,000 viewers? Where are they in his chat? Why don't they talk? Why is it that, that they, these, these people are sitting there memeing and making fun of him when he plays? Right? I mean, these supposed to be 2,000 supporters. And that's what I said. I said, you know, what's the difference between having that or, or only a few hundred, but at least if you have the few hundred and the people support you because they're positive people, is that not the better option? I would much rather have a few hundred people on a stream, all of which who are enjoying the content, interacting with me in a positive way, engaging and supporting, rather than having 2,000 viewers out of which the majority of them are people here just to crap on you. Why would you want that? I would much rather have a positive small audience than a large negative audience. That's why I don't cater to my haters, right? I got a million of them, but I'm not going to do that. That's not who I am, right? So, 
it doesn't seem to make much sense. That was one of the legit questions I had for you guys. And basically now all I've heard is conspiracy theories. Everyone, the thing is, you guys say this shit, but there's no way to confirm that. Oh, he has fake viewers. He buys view bots. He self subscribes and does all that to make himself look more popular. What evidence do you have of that besides circumstantial? That's bullshit. I will call that out. I don't listen. I don't like LTG, but that shit's bullshit. Unless you have concrete evidence of what you're saying, you're just making shit up, which is what people do to me all day, every day. You understand? That's not right. Unless you have evidence that something's actually going down, you can guess as much as you want, but to say, oh, he just does it. No, nah, that's fucked up. If you, unless you have the evidence he's doing it, you can't just say that he's doing it as a fact because it's not true. And people have to stop that bullshit. Too many people on the internet get away with that and say, oh, that he definitely does that. You know what? I haven't seen the evidence. If you provide the evidence... That's one thing. I haven't seen it. No one showed me shit. I don't, I'm not going to believe it until I hear it or see it. Maybe the guy just has... I mean, I'll be honest. Do I really think 2,000 legitimate positive people watch LTG every day? No. But perhaps he has a couple benefactors who are very nice and, and, and you know regularly support him in a big way. They like what he stands for. They like him as a creator, as a person. And maybe they're keeping him afloat. And that's legit. That's not to be hated on or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I don't see why people crap on that. Now, if you want to crap on his gameplay, you want to crap on him blocking people constantly, that's a whole different thing entirely. But to crap on the guy's viewership and support if it's legit, that's bullshit. I think a lot of people, they see that and they're like, there's no way that someone like him who has a bad reputation could be that successful, right? I got a catch in my finger here. I'm trying to fix it. Anyway, um... I think that's what it is. But anyway, so for me, the way I see it, view botting, it's not allowed. Therefore, self-support to try to boost your channel also is probably not allowed. It's probably why YouTube doesn't allow it. So no, I'm not going to go between my channels and try to cross gift tips and memberships and things and get in trouble. That's stupid. <laughs> it's, really, it's not very smart at all. Um, Let's see here. Shout out to 5A1 Bull who became a member this morning. Thank you very much. Meme re up his membership says they don't chat because they're afraid of him. They're afraid of him. LTG's chat is afraid of him? I don't know if I believe that. What? <laughs> what? So they go to his channel, was like a horror thing. They, they think he's like a slasher killer. And at any moment, he could strike out, and it's like a jump scare. They get scared. They like that. They find entertainment in that. What are you talking about? <laughs> he, does he put on, like, a fucking, like, a hockey mask, and he pull out a machete? Ah! Scares his whole audience? What are you talking about? You guys are crazy, man. Anyway. Oh, um, let's see here. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Wumba has tipped me $2. Thank you, Wumba. So, do you have Amazon Prime? I would love to see you review the first season of Invincible. The second season is coming in November. It's like Mortal Kombat with superheroes. Um, I do have Amazon Prime. I do have Amazon Video. Um, I don't know if my reviewing this first season of Invincible would matter. I tried reviewing older seasons of stuff. Nobody cared. Um, however, I do think... Ooh, I do think uh, reviewing the current season might make sense. So maybe what I would do is in my free time, try to watch it over time. How long is it? Not very long, just like a few episodes or whatever. Maybe like 10, 12 episodes. That's doable. And then when the second season comes out, watch it and review it. Okay? Maybe that would make more sense. As opposed to me, I don't think reviewing the first season, no one's going to give two shits. Oh, it's very short. Yeah, people are saying... It's only about eight episodes long, and each episode's 20 minutes long. Oh, that's not a big deal at all, then. Invincible is propaganda. Do not watch it. <laughs> really? It's propaganda. It's only six episodes, I'm being told. It's a six-episode propaganda fest. I'm sorry. I can't put up with that, man. No, now it's eight. People can't, people can't decide. It's six. No, it's eight. I swear my chat is always like the place where nothing is certain. 
Oh, you're going to beat that game in seven hours. No, it's another 27 hours. Huh? No, it's six episodes. No, it's eight episodes. Huh? Oh, the episodes are 22 minutes long. No, one's 45 minutes long. What? <laughs> no one knows anything. It is eight. I'm being told it is eight episodes. Okay, it's eight episodes. Good. Good. Oh, how delightful. After one of my, my parts of DSP versus the Internet from Sunday, after having been, been demonetized all week and already gotten any views it was ever going to possibly get, YouTube finally reviewed it and says, oh, it's okay for ads and put ads on it. Thanks, YouTube. <laughs> fucking assholes. They're so fucking slow, man. Can I talk like Boomhauer from King of the Hill? Well, what the hell you what? Take my boy, I'm going to take my boy, I'm going to stream time to call some kind of drama here. I'm not going to have that here, boy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Is that Boom Hauer? That was excellent. That was actually pretty good. <laughs> I, I like King of the Hill. It's a great show. I used to watch King of the Hill all the time. <laughs> A little bit of Johnny Bravo mix. I haven't had, I haven't heard Boomhauer in a long time. I'd have to watch the show again. Then I could probably nail it. There you go. No, I didn't actually watch a lot of Fresh Prince. So I, I've seen it, but over the years, but I never really watched actively Fresh Prince. So I actually don't know the, the theme song. Like this is a story. Blah 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 blah. Like I can't remember it. I don't remember any of the lyrics. <laughs> Aren't they bringing back King of the Hill? They are, right? They're bringing back King of the Hill, but sadly, we just lost the voice actor who did Dale, and I guess he was actually one of the big like executive producers and writers of the series. So, man, I wonder how it's going to go. That sucks. That sucks, but I mean, the show's been running as long as The Simpsons. You realize that? Like, The Simpsons were early 90s, and I remember King of the Hill came out just, like, a couple years after Mike Judge. It was actually... The, that was the mainstream Mike Judge show, while Beavis and Butthead was, like, the MTV adult Mike Judge show. And what's funny is, I wonder... I would think King of the Hill, over the years, has done better than Beavis and Butthead, even though Beavis and Butthead was known in a bigger way, and they had, like, a movie and everything. I mean, King of the Hill's been on for how long and keeps getting revived? So you would think that's like the go-to series that's probably been the most successful for Mike Judge. It's coming back next year, and he was able to voice only a couple of episodes. So, wow. I mean, that's going to suck because he's been one of the major... Dale is one of the major components of the dynamic of the show. So you don't know how that show is going to work without him, right? Dang it. Is it. Now, wait a minute. Is the show revival going to be a revival of the original show, much like The Simpsons, where no one ever aged or changed? Or are they actually going to advance time and Hank and Peggy are going to be old and their kids are grown up? That would be interesting to see adult Bobby. That would actually be more interesting, I feel, than the original show. To see, like, present day King of the Hill. I would like that more. It is. There's a time skip. Wow. Now I actually want to see it. All right, now I totally want to see it. Because now I want to see what's happened with these characters all these years later, right? Nice. Yeah, I know a lot of the people... For example, you're right. Brittany Murphy voiced Luann. Tom Petty was the voice. And they've all passed away. So the show would either have to recast or be totally different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. 
I'm actually I I, I really I always liked that show. I always enjoyed it. All right. Any other topics? <laughs> Any other topics? See, I said today. You know, we don't have much to talk about today. Today will be a more laid back podcast. There's not much going on, and here we are. It's almost twelve thirty. We never have a problem. Seriously, we never have a problem on this podcast talking and chilling. It's a good. It's a good vibe here. Always. That's what I like. Jade says hi, Jasper. Jasper is on the floor in a breaded position, a breaded kitty position, and he's relaxing. There you go. <clears throat> TK to the super says, chat says, Side Scrollers Trav was me. I guess I should charge back since I am not real. Hey, Phil, how is your day going? Well, first of all, you can't charge back a super chat. That's not even possible. It's all transactions are final. So you shouldn't say silly stuff like that. Number two, how on earth would I have known who was who or if it was you? I checked that Side Scrollers Trav super chat and it said it was a channel with no views and one sub. So I figured it was fake. If it was real, I actually wouldn't have banned it. I thought that it was fake. And now I, now I don't know if I can unban it. Because now it's too far up. I don't think I can click. Can I click on it? Was it real? I can't click on it now. Why do you have two accounts? Why do you have an account called TK? Well, thank you for the super chat. But no, I would say don't charge back because you can't. It's not possible. You try, though. Go for it. See what happens. Actually, I'd be fascinated to hear what happens if you try. <clears throat> I don't know what Fantasy Strike is. Never heard of it. It's a good question, Daxma. It's a good question that everyone's been fascinated by for ages. Why pay someone to troll? It's a very fascinating question. People do it all the time here. Don't ask me why. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't seem to have much benefit. <clears throat> do I remember Dilbert? Yes. Dan the man, thank you for a ten dollar uh, tip. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Oops. go. Thank you, Dan. <clears throat> I know he keeps going. He doesn't understand what I'm saying. I don't think that uh, TK is understanding what I'm saying. Because he just did another super chat and he says work account I can charge back on my credit card but yeah, if I don't get what I pay for you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. Allow me to rephrase because I did. I guess I phrased it badly. Okay? You can do that. And that's fine. You can do that as much as you want. But number one, it's not legal. And number two, I keep the money anyway. YouTube, all transactions are final. Super Chats, it says right in the YouTube Super Chat contract when you Super Chat. It essentially says you are agreeing to their terms and their terms say when you agree to Super Chat, there are no refunds at all. So you can argue that with your credit card company. You very well may win, but I keep the Super Chat revenue anyway. There's never, there's no such thing as a charged back Super Chat. It doesn't exist, you see? So even if YouTube loses out or your credit card company loses out, whoever ends up losing out, if there's a chargeback, it ain't me. So I'm just being honest with you and up front. You know, that's just one of the things about Super Chatting that's actually quite good is that there's no, no take backsies for Super Chats. <clears throat> but yeah, I says he's admitting to a crime. I mean, yeah. Because again, in the terms and conditions, when you Super Chat on YouTube, it outright says up front, no refunds. So if you then try to get a refund, you're violating the terms of what you agreed to when you Super Chat it. Yeah. But, I mean, hey, that's neither here nor there. That has nothing to do with me at all. 
<laughs> you want to defraud YouTube or whatever and go for it, you know, I mean, and you're publicly talking about it in Super Chats, I mean, that's on you. I don't care what you do with your time or your money. <clears throat> How is it a crime? Because you're trying to say that there was, for example, let's say, for example, you did a big super chat to a YouTuber, right? 50 bucks. And then you try to go to your credit card company. What would you say? You'd have to lie because there's no contract with YouTube saying you're guaranteed a service or anything in return of a super chat. It says right in the super chat terms and conditions, this is a one-way transaction. You'll get nothing back. So if you try to argue with your credit card company that I didn't get a service that I was guaranteed. There's no service. You were never guaranteed anything. <clears throat> there you go. See, now here you go. Now he's trying to insult me, but he's consider he's continuing to give me money. <laughs> You're continuing to give me money. You understand that? Every super chat I keep. Should we continue this? How long do you think you'll keep doing super chats? <laughs> this is great. How long do you think he'll keep doing it? Like, by the way, thank you to Ahmed8 for a super chat as well. That was your first one. Thank you to Ahmed. I know. Why stop it? Because we were like, ban him. Why ban him? He's still doing it. I can't. You can't make this up. I mean, again, we were just saying, why would someone pay to troll? I don't know. Why would you Why would you financially help someone? It just doesn't make any sense, you know? I don't know. Is it you scratch your head, head scratcher? You're giving me that share of 1K I'm worried about. I'm not worried about 1K. I don't care about the money. I don't. I don't care about any money. I didn't ask to make money to be on that interview. I never did. I didn't ask to get paid for it. Did I? Did I ask for any money up front? Did I ask for any money after the fact? Nope. Once again, it's called straw man and you create an argument to deflect from the actual arguments that I've made because that's all you can do because you can't actually defend the fact that how heinous the actions were of what you did so you make up an argument. So if it makes you feel better about yourself to contribute to my streams, go for it. I don't care. Go for it. I'm not going to say no, but that's not what I've ever complained about. And you have nothing to say about my complaints at all, which is why I don't entertain your nonsense. <clears throat> <clears throat> anyway, we do have to end today's podcast and get started with gameplay. We do. I know you guys want to see... Uh, GTA 5, I want to keep going with this game so we can, like I said, actually make progress in it and finish it by the time the Starfield comes out. So as much as I would like to sit here and enjoy all these super chats <laughs> and straw man arguments that are nonsensical, we do have to get to gameplay today. <clears throat> all right. Oh, I, Sarah, I know. Trust me. You notice? I'm not, I'm not doing anything that these guys want. It's obvious. It's the same reason why, after being said, I couldn't be on their show as a guest like I was promised originally. I couldn't have the follow-up interview. All of a sudden, they start contacting me out of the blue. They want me back on the show. They want to debate. They want to play Street Fighter with me. They want to do this and that. It's called desperation. So what happens when you have absolutely no content to put out there that will get any attention for yourself. So you try to jump back on the bandwagon of what got you the attention before. I know exactly what it is. I'm not stupid. That's why I'm not entertaining the bullshit. Okay? This guy wants to keep throwing me super chats like a dummy. He can do it. But outside of that, we're going to go right over and play GTA 5 today and ignore the nonsense. We've got no time for their bullshit. <clears throat> okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for a very chill Level 1 podcast today. I hope that you enjoyed it. And uh, we got one day left. You can believe it. Like I said, one of my longest streaming weeks I've ever done. And uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and chilling today. And uh, hopefully tomorrow you'll also be here for the finale of Street Fighter gameplay and all of that. One of the longest running weeks I've ever done. 
Thank you for that, and enjoy this chill... I say chill summer vibes as I'm sitting here in record heat in the Pacific Northwest. It is what it is. But I uh, enjoy you. Keeping my company. Today was, like I said, I didn't have much to talk about. We still had a great show, right? All right, thank you all. I'll see you all tomorrow. Peace out.